Okay, for those of you who don't know, Steve Jobs has come out and said, Why Apple hates Flash. Well, that, that, that's, that's not what they call it. They call it Thoughts on Flash. And we're going to try and go over this. It's interesting, to say the least. Apple has a long relationship with Adobe. In fact, we met Adobe's founders, yada, 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 yada. Their first point here. First, there's open. You know, because one of the debates on Flash is, is it open? You know, it's, well, we, we, we think it might be, but you know, it really isn't. Hmm. Well, uh, you know, on that note, let, let's just hear, but first let's hear what Steve said. Adobe's Flash products are 100% proprietary. They are only available from Apple, and Adobe has sole authority as to their future enhancement, pricing, etc. Why Apple's Flash products are widely available, this does not mean they are open. Since they are controlled entirely by Adobe and available only from Adobe, by almost any definition, Flash is a closed system. Apple has many proprietary products, too. Though the operating system for the iPhone, iPod, and iPad is proprietary, we strongly believe that all standards pertaining to the web should be open. Rather than use Flash, Apple has adopted HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript. All open standards. Apple's mobile devices all ship with high-performance, low-power implementations of these open standards. HTML5, the new web standard that has been adopted by Apple, Google, and many others, lets web developers create advanced graphics technology, animations, and transitions without relying on third-party Blizzard plugins like Flash. HTML5 is completely open and controlled by a standards committee, of which Apple is a member. Apple even creates open standards for the web. For example, Apple began with a small open source project and created WebKit, a complete open source HTML5 rendering engine that is the heart of the Safari web browser used in all our products. WebKit has been widely adopted. Google uses it for Android's browser, Palm uses it, Nokia uses it, and RIM, aka BlackBerry, has announced they will use it too. Almost every smartphone web browser, other than Microsoft's, uses WebKit. By making its WebKit technology open, Apple has set the standard for mobile web browsers. Interesting. Well, let, let's just get into that for a moment. Um, okay, first things first. Yes, some form of WebKit has been used in this. There's a lot of people that are unhappy about that because it's very limiting. Um, and even though, yes, all the companies that he said are using a version of WebKit, they haven't implemented it the same. Which means it isn't this big glorified standard that Apple's making it out to be. Don't get me wrong. I, I love a lot of the things HTML5 has to go into. Um, but, and, you know, they pick it open. Okay. For, like, you know, we, we, I've covered this some of the Linux videos and other things, but there's open, open, and open. Okay. First off, there's the purest definition of open, which is all software is free and should be, and everything must be free. Okay impractical and so oh yeah patents are bad um, mm. and there's the other definition of open which is patented leave the source code available for anyone and everyone to see uh, if possible make it free to the end person but that doesn't mean you can't make money off of it money is not a bad thing being greedy and preventing innovation that's a bad thing uh, but money itself isn't and then there's the third school of open, which is closed source, closed thing, but we're going to distribute it in a way that encourages wide adoption. 
it's a very loose definition of open, and in that respect, that is what Adobe is. Because if somebody wants to use Flash, I'm not, again, don't get me wrong, I'm not defending Flash, and I hate it as much as anyone. But if somebody wants to use Flash, the person creating the content and or service distributing it chooses to use Flash and buy the license if they're doing any kind of commercial thing. There's free licenses for people doing non-commercial things, but for people doing commercial things, you know, like YouTube or yada yada, which is transitioning off of Flash for all their on-demand content, um, buy the license. And there's other things filling this niche. So, let's go on to point two. Second, there's the full web. Adobe has repeatedly said that Apple's mobile devices cannot access the full web because 75% on the video web on them is Flash. What they don't say is that almost all video is also available in more modern format, H.264, and viewable on iPhones, iPads, and iPads. YouTube, with an estimated 40% of web's videos, shares in an app bundle on the Apple mobile device with the iPad offering perhaps the best YouTube discovery and viewing experience ever. And to this video from and say and to this video from Vimeo, Netflix, Facebook, ABC, CBS, and CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, yada 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 yada, yada the New York Times, you know, all people who are old media, <laughs> the Wall Street Journal, Sports Illustrated people, yada 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 yada, and many others. So aren't these app yada yada, yada the Apple devices aren't missing much video. Another Adobe claim is that Apple devices cannot play Flash games. This is true. Fortunately, there are over 50,000 games and entertainment titles on the Apple Store, and many of them are free. There are more games and entertainment titles available for iPhone, iPod, and iPad than any other platform in the world. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Except for the internet. And, you know, this is ironic. This is, a, this is an interesting spin to put on the Flash games because um, a lot of games were being ported over from Flash, which is now going to stop because Apple wanted it to stop. Mm, a lot of the places they named, you have to get an app for, all of which are paid. Netflix, Facebook, um, I know, uh, I, I don't know if the ABC, CBS, and uh, CNN ones are paid, or, or the Fox News one, but I know the Netflix and Facebook app are paid, uh, I, I know the Netflix one is, somebody tell me if the Facebook one is, but you know, it's, it's an interesting point to take. Um, I'm all for using some sort of HTML5 standard to deliver on-demand content and be removing all this stuff, for all the reasons he said. What I wish was going to happen, as opposed to various implementations of WebKit, is that we were going to adopt an open-ended decoder. Um, you know, there's nothing necessarily wrong with using H.264 as a standard, or anything else that can be done via a hardware chipset. And for those of you who don't know, any codex can be done via a hardware chipset. The one being used today is H.264. Five years ago, all these hardware chipsets were MPEG. There was a brief period there where they were some version of MP4. At, at, you can encode whatever dang codecs you want into that hardware kind of chipset. And it really is the most efficient way for a mobile device. Uh, so, you know, I, I find it interesting that Apple's like, well, everything has to go this way, and, you know, some version of WebKit is best. It's like, because Apple's a hardware company. They could put any chip they wanted in that phone. They could put one that did an MPEG decode. They could make one that did an H.264. They could make one that did an OGG uh, Thora. They could make one that did anything they want. Granted, bit for bit, H.264 is one of the better ones now, but others are coming. I'm up on time. I will cover, because Steve Jobs goes into six points here, but we'll go into the rest and the next part. Peace out. See y'all.